Humans have always been intrigued by their relationship with machines. As much as we want them, we have always been skeptical about their impact on human life. Today in this presentation, I'm going to argue that how AI, despite of its benefits, has been not been able to create the right impact that we are looking, and we should strive for a balanced relationship between man and machine. Unless we go for that, there, is to be, there will be a problem which can be created and it is difficult for us to manage as well. With this, I would like to give you an understanding on what is artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence means when you put in intelligence into machines and enable it to do a human-like actions. It is a term which has been in, the, in this world for more than 70 years, which was coined by Professor John McCarthy in the year 1955. And we have certainly come a long way in the 70 years time period. Any machine which churns out data in the form of voice, data, image, or video can essentially be made intelligent by putting in uh, artificial intelligence algorithms on top of it. So if this has been here for last 70 years, why is the AI recently has becoming a great thing or creating an impact on the human life? The answer lies in the first revolution or the digital transformation. Now with the digital transformation, what has happened is that the advent of the new technologies has come into space. Uh, we have to implement technologies like Internet of Things, uh, AR, VR, blockchain as well. And what it has led to is the divulge of data which is coming up. Now AI becomes the strong pillar which can essentially ingest huge amount of data and is able to generate results which is responsible or which is able to deliver engagements for the clients across the world. Some of, as enterprise across the world have been looking at some of the key use cases of AI, we can look at from uh, aeros aerospace industry to uh, oil and gas, from healthcare to retail, from e-commerce to banking. Every industry is being changing and using in AI in different formats. Medical industry is using AI from preventive to predict, uh, predictive care. Manufacturing is transforming its uh, entire processes, as well as uh, retail is giving more personalized recommendations to people. AI also having, is having a great impact on our individual human lives. When we go and do some kind of a browsing on Amazon, it basically tracks our behavior, and it is able to give out inputs to you in the form of a recommendation engines. Or uh, when you log on to hdfc.com or when you log on to rail, uh, indianrailways.com, the chatbot is essentially an uh, uh, NLP-driven chatbot which can ingest, which can understand your conversation and give you right input based on the back-end questions that have been fed into the system. What I've done here in the next few slides is give you an example of how some of the global industries have transformed and some of the global companies have transformed themselves. The first example I've taken is of Telefonica Spain. Telefonica Spain is one of the largest telecom operators in the world, operating in 20 countries uh, with their operations in South America, Europe, and China. They started the digital transformation journey in the year 2011 with a very clear AI policy of transforming customer care, enterprise business, as well as their network optimization strategy. In 2016, they launched a platform called as Aura with the help of uh, the data that they collected from the customers. Now, Aura is a great platform because it enables the customers to not only uh, resolve their queries through the platform itself, but it also helps to uh, give the recommendations based on their uh, usage and give recommendations on uh, device usage, give recommendations on what is the right uh, uh, so device usage, what is the kind of right plans they can input on it. A great example of a telecom operator, how it has transformed itself from a service provider to a experience provider. The second example I put up is a uh, multi-brand retailer. Uh, it's a French multi-brand retailer called Sephora. Now Sephora has uh, been operating in around 20, 33 countries with 2300 stores across the world. You have one store in Pune as well. Now what Sephora does is, uh, it has, since being a multi-brand retailer, it provides thousands of SKUs to its customers. And the key problem that they were facing was, 
how can they ensure that the customers are able to choose from the right set of products that they are doing, that they uh, that they are able to buy. So they turned onto the AI-based technology, which is a app that they developed, wherein a customer uh, or can upload its photograph. The uh, the, uh, the app recognizes the face and virtually it allows the customers to try different products. I know how it is difficult to find the right color match for the lipstick or a mascara or, you know, uh, I'm sure, you know, some ladies have uh, the problems in terms of finding it. Now, that, that particular app essentially solves the entire problem of it. The second thing that they were facing, their customers was facing was, how do I get the right foundation color uh, for my consumers? Again, they came to, they used AI to identify the right technology, wherein the uh, customers are able to put in, upload their photographs, and the app recognizes the very perfect color tone, and then recommend what is the kind of uh, foundation color that they can deploy on. Expe a, a very good example of how a retailer which has turned itself from a product seller to an experienced seller. The third example is of a Dubai airport. So Dubai is one of the largest, Dubai airport is one of the largest uh, and the busiest airports. Uh, they have been experiencing, uh, experimenting with artificial intelligence technologies for a while. Um, some of the products, some of the POCs that they have, they have been experimenting includes autonomous cars to ply uh, their passengers within the space, within their uh, airport premises. Or they have been looking at how can I go away with the AI uh, custom officials and put a facial recognition based system which will enable the AI officials to just sit back and relax and uh, AI take over it. Uh, they, are all, they are also experimenting with the robotic arm which essentially means that the robotic arm can then uh, uh, channelize or finalize the luggage which needs to be sent it across. They are also looking at predictive maintenance to scan the scanners because uh, the preventive maintenance takes a lot of time for the users to move forward. Now the key question comes into us is that if AI is having so much benefits, why do we need to define our relationship with artificial intelligence? The answer lies in the problems and the limitations that are posed by AI. What we can see out here is that uh, AI can be biased and racist. A lot of speakers have spoken about it. I'll go a little detail in that. In 2016, Microsoft launched its uh, AI-based chatbot called Tay. Now, Tay was, a, was supposed to have a pleasant personality and used to learn from the user's based conversation. But what users taught it was profanity, abusive language, and racism. And Microsoft actually had to pull it down. The second example was of an uh, Amazon-based, uh, Amazon uh, invented or started a recruitment tool, an AI-based recruitment tool. Now, that tool also had a problem. It was trained on male-dominated databases. Now, what uh, Amazon figured it about was that the women candidates were not being selected by, our, by, the, by the tool itself, and hence they had to pull it down. In both the cases, what we can see, what is the kind of data that is being fed to the system is the kind of output that we are looking at. And hence, it can be biased, it can be racist. Fakes, uh, somebody spoke about it, is, is, is definitely a problem that our industry faces. Uh, fakes can be in the form of video, images, news that comes out very regularly, and a lot of celebrities are caught into it, or the normal human beings as well. Now, this is an example of a uh, university of Washington wherein a deep fake image was created uh, of the ex-president uh, Barack Obama was created uh, by using thousands of his pictures and videos wherein the model was trained to create a replica of Barack Obama. Again, that if this thing can be launched into, into our normal society, it can definitely create havoc politically as well as economically. Uh, we spoke about intrusion of privacy. That's also one of the things that is happening on a daily life. Uh, China has launched, as we all know, has launched a system which can track uh, consumers' behavior, consumer patterns all across, and then based on that, the consumers are, uh, you know, given a rating and a grading system. Now, while we talk about two good solutions wherein 
Sephora and Dubai Airport is using the facial recognition solution. But here it is always, it's about the intrusion of privacy for the customers, uh, for the users. AI does not understand relationships. What we bothered about, what humans are bothered about is relationship. Anything that needs, uh, anything, any project, any, uh, you know, basis that moves forward is about the human relationships. But does AI care about relationships? Do they bother about it? Do they know about the relationship? Definitely not. It is us, the humans, who are responsible to create an environment where the, all the stakeholders are coming together and, uh, uh, and take the project or an engagement forward. AI does not understand human relationships. AI does not have a contextual understanding. So some of the speakers also spoke about this component wherein while you fed in a data and there is an output, but there is always a background attached to it, there is always a foreground attached to it, there is a market understanding, and there is a, you know, a complete analysis of the problem that needs to be given. But AI is just, you know, you put in the numbers, you put in the data, and it gives an output. At the, at the end of the day, you still need a consultant or a human to explain the context behind it. AI does not have a capability to do that. For example, if in, if, if a marketing analyst uh, project is being done, wherein the media ROI is being calculated, they, uh, AI will be able to sort out uh, or give you the results in a very good manner. But at the end of the day, uh, what is the impact of this? How the consumers are behaving? What is the, how the ROI is good or bad? Why is it going up and down? Can only be looked out when a consultant or a human comes into picture. Uh, I, in the morning, I read uh, one of the quotes from uh, Vani Kola, who is a managing director of uh, Kalari Capital, one of the famous uh, venture capitalist firms in India. She said that in, in, in most of her life decisions, she has taken is based on her gut feeling, on her intuition. And as business leaders, while there is a lot of data that is being presented to us, the decisions that we take are a lot based on our gut and intuition. While AI can help us in terms of uh, analyzing and channelizing all the data that is being thrown to us, it is not able to take that intuitive call that we always have or a gut feeling that we take and take into consideration before making a uh, call in terms of moving forward. So what does this leave, leave to us? It, le it gives us a message that anything that is automated that has to be digitized, will always be digitized. But what is, what remains to us, what remains to us as humans is the softer aspects of our capabilities, the relationship, the teamwork, uh, the empathy factor, the softer aspects. That is what we need to focus on as we move forward and we expect that AI to come in and do a lot of work which is being automated and which is going to be uh, taken away from humans. Uh, this is a famous slide that has been given by a famous futurist called Jerd Leonard. He says that since a lot of work that is being done will be automated and machines will be doing it, our education system is also to be changed. From STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, which is our current focus, it has to move to Heki, which he calls as humanity, empathy, creativity, and imaginations. Humans are built to create things Humans are built to imagine new products and services. So since a lot of work will be done the, by the machines itself, it is the Heki which is going to be taken forward by the kids of the future. <coughs> and last but not the least, I am going to give you a snippet of a research which was done by Harvard Business Review, wherein 1,500 companies were uh, interviewed or surveyed. And what they figured out was that if humans and machines, they work in tandem, and in unison together, then the best results are achieved. Machines are left to do with what they do best, which is basically calculating and ingesting data and finding patterns and speech recognitions and so on and so forth. And humans are left to do with what comes naturally to them, creativity, imagination, and uh, creativity, imagination, teamwork, leadership, etc. When we do these two things work, businesses achieve the best results. And it is also up to us how we lead the evolution of AI and not lead this technology for, uh, for taking over the humanity. Thank you very much.